What is up, App Nation? Welcome to another YouTube live stream. Coming here, what is today's date? November something. But after <laughs> Halloween, my guest today, we're going to talk all about ASO. What's the best ways? What's the newest ways to really drive more organic downloads? And today, I've got a phenomenal guest. And I know you guys love it when we talk all about ASO. His name is David Margrion. He is the head of ASO at Check ASO. Io. So go check them out. It's a fantastic tool. We've got a video coming up talking all about the tool, but it's checkaso.io linked up into the YouTube description as well. He's going to share everything you need to know about ASO and getting more organic downloads. David, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you and with everyone who, who are watching us now. And I hope you're not afraid about my background because it was the Halloween party yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you guys just had it yesterday, Halloween party. Yeah. No, oh, no, that's great. not yesterday, the uh, one week before. week before. Yeah, week before. Yeah. I want to say, say hello to a few people. Bianca, what's happening? Good to see you. And then we've got, I can't, can you read that? Yeah, Savili Kavalenko. <laughs> okay, I love this. All right, I'm glad you're here, David. 5,000 Shazams, what's happening? And all right, thank, thank you for being here. We got Phil. What's happening, Phil? Look at his hair. That's a stud. <laughs> what's up, Johan? We got Leandro. Oh my goodness, so many people. ASO, MF, Queen, what's happening? And then we got Simon as well. I wanted to share this just let's just have some fun. You know, we tried to do some Halloween stuff too, David. We carved. I'm, I'm very proud of this, you know, we tried to do Among <laughs> Us. You can't see this right here because my wife did a portrait mode, but we did an Among Us character here and you know, this is the dead body. And then here's my failed attempt at an Among Us costume. Just... Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you're being too kind. All right, well, let's talk about ASO a little bit. What are some things that you guys are focused on with Check ASO and also like, what are some new ways that our listeners and our viewers can take advantage when it comes to ASO as well? Well, what we do, we have a platform that um, allows uh, everyone who's working with apps or who is uh, doing ASO to try to focus on everything related ASO, find keywords, track competitors, track your external internal metrics. So it's just everything about ASO, especially if you are newbie, we have uh, great tools to let you know uh, something new to get some insights from the ASO field. So, and um, now we are just um, making a great uh, research about similar apps. So I hope I can share some information about that today with you. We want to talk all about how to hack that, David. Well, let's get into it then, because I, you know, for one of my clients, full disclosure, we're trying to really figure out ways to get him to show up for one of these top apps, you know, similar apps we know on Google play, you correct me if I'm saying anything wrong but with similar apps, we know it does drive good volume on Google play. So what is, what have you learned on how to really show up for similar apps on Google? Yeah, it really drives very well. Cause, uh, uh, as for me, I think this, uh, similar app section, uh, the similar app block is the uh, most influential and, uh, um, and available for analysis source of explore and, uh, uh, browse traffic so getting into similar block uh, can affect your organic uh, uh, metrics uh, such as page views impressions downloads and as for me i think the main uh, i guess everybody knows that the main thing uh, the main uh, reason for getting to uh, similar app section is the category you should be the same category uh, as the app you want to be on its page in similar apps so another great thing is um, I think um, uh, that uh, Google Plays and Apple App Store's algorithms analyze the data um, about your um, users base. So if uh, some users download uh, your app and your competitors app, so uh, you are going to appear in its uh, similar apps block. So, and your competitor is going to appear in your similar app block. So, and uh, we have also another thing, so I think everybody know that uh, you should work with text uh, in Google Play uh, because it's very popular topic nowadays. And also you should work with Google Cloud, natural language, try to um, make it more 
understandable for Google Play algorithms uh, to make them understand what is your app about, so they uh, will, uh, so they could um, uh, make you appear in uh, similar app blocks. Interesting. Hey, David, anything around like long description? Here's what I've tried. Okay, so you tell me. <laughs> all right. I'm like, all right, let me look at the long description. Let me kind of see what they're saying. I've even looked at their app title and their subtitle to try to be like, let me make it very similar to what they have. Does that impact it at all? You don't need to make the similar uh, description with your competitors, but try to uh, mention uh, the keywords that you want to be indexed by. So if you see that your competitors uh, use uh, keywords, for example, uh, if if it's a app uh, with uh, movies, you want to track um, watch movies, watch TV shows or uh, TV show streaming, something like that. You should uh, don't forget about uh, density, you should don't forget, you should don't um, uh, spam the keywords with, with uh, commas, for example, and you should try to make uh, your long description as much as it possible for Google Play algorithms. So um, I advise you and everybody to uh, visit uh, the site of Google Cloud uh, Natural Language so you can just paste your long description and uh, uh, analyze it and see some insights about your description, how um, their algorithms uh, assigns you with um, with the category you want to be indexed by. I love it. Okay, cool. And I want to share with you guys what we have planned for today. So we've got these apps coming up in the app audit. Once again, if you guys are interested in getting your apps audited, I'm going to put this up here. Just go to appmasters.com slash audit. We have a long list. It's getting shrinking, so fill it out. You're going to be up there. But we'll take a look at any questions you want from a monetization growth perspective. Obviously, because we have David and he's so knowledgeable about ASO, we're going to focus more on the ASO topics. But we've got movie deals. we got Love Sync. we got got Office Hours, which is fitness at work. Pretty interesting. And then something that I'm very passionate about, fantasy football. So I want to talk about this. And look at this. Good reviews, too. So really cool apps that we're going to be taking a look at. All right, David, let's get into some of this. I've got a question that we want to kind of talk about too. And I know there's been some commentary in here already, but damn comedy says, Hey, Steve, what are your thoughts on apps you using weekly subscription models? I would say that it does work for certain categories of apps. I know a couple of people who have it. I know Johan says, Hey, it's, I use it in my app. It's actually one of the most popular ones. And I think it really depends on the the app itself so think about like the category of apps if your competitors are doing something similar it might work for you but if it's like something new people aren't used to it like most people aren't then it let's say for a meditation most are monthly yearly and lifetime so i might not do that i know there are some that are doing weekly in meditation but i might do that not do that but it's worth testing i would just say if the category plays right for it, like entertainment type of apps. I did a app audit with a celebrity voice changer and they were doing weekly subscriptions. Dave, anything you wanna add on that? Yeah, um, I think this model is not uh, as popular as it could be, but if you see your, as you mentioned, if you see that your closest uh, competitors use their this model and it's better to try and then you can just uh, check the results and then uh, think, uh, is it, is it fit you or doesn't so only testing can uh, solve this problem i think okay shall we get into movie deals what do you think we got eric yeah. says keywords for installs niche whoops let me show this all right so eric says keyword for installs niche product in a huge market with lots of well-funded competitors so obviously i'm gonna look at this app this is cheap movie apps Let's take a look. Save money and watch more movies from the news. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's it's sort of like a like a curation of other apps so that there are deals. So kind of like a Groupon or one of these deal type of sites where if you want to get a deal on a certain movie, you can do that. And that's what this is all about. All right. Any you want to lead off, David? What are you seeing so far? 
So I like the app. Uh, well, I can tell something more. Uh, if we move to our platform, I can show yeah, some my insights, my thoughts about that. Whoops. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's okay. So uh, first of all, um, I want to show, let's go to the this section and take a look at the app page. So the first thing I want to mention is that uh, uh, there is a maximum characters in the subtitle and the title, but the app is not uh, good indexing. Uh, for its relevant keywords and we can take a look at search visibility index on our platform so it shows the level of your uh, indexation by relevant keywords and here we can see that it's very low so um, we can go to and take a look at how total keywords uh, this app is indexed and it's just only 160. So we can also go and take a look at um, the keywords that this app is indexed by. And if we sort it by the rank, for example, uh, we can see that, oh, I'm sorry. We can see that uh, the top positions by the keywords that are not so popular, we can see the search volume is only five. Uh, well, the search volume is based on Apple uh, search ads. So um, I think it's better to use uh, keywords like, um, for example, um movie uh, uh for example tv shows or movie or movie streaming i think it will, it will better affect the ranking and it will better affect the um impressions and um something about screenshot i want to say uh well first of all i like the captions they are very very clear they are bright and uh the first thing that you see when you come to the page you see the captions but uh, if we are talking about um, interface and mockups, and here you can see the um, movie covers, and they are so small, so I even can't see everything um, on my browser, on web. So especially when user comes to uh, Apple App Store uh, from his uh, iPhone, uh, I think he will hardly understand what is it uh, on the screenshot. So. I think it's better to use less uh, movie covers, for example, three or four, but uh, make them bigger and show and highlight uh, these prices so um, users can see the discount, the amount of discount. Uh, they can see how it costed and how, how much it costs now. So I think it will be the great way to increase the conversion rate. Yeah, um, just to hit on that, I, I like this. What is this Chrome extension that you're using? that shows the Apple page. Uh, this one? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I don't remember. It's from Storm Maven, Maven okay. yeah. All right. You can download in Google Chrome, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I agree with you when it comes to your the screenshots. It's like, what I would do is really highlight, like save 75% off, you know, blockbuster movies. Like, you know, kind of repeat what your main unique proposition is. I think the second screenshot, what you kind of have listed here too, is sort of wasted in my eye, David. Like, it's just like, it doesn't show anything, right? And so it's kind of like, yeah. why not show something else other than like bundle, save big? So I think that's important. If we look at, and I'm gonna bring up my page real quick. If we look at the, the app title, and I'll zoom in for you guys as much as like, whoops, wrong zoom, wrong window to zoom. All right, there you go. If we look at the app title, then what we see is it could be better optimized, right? Movie deals, I liked that, but this watch online and TV discounts, watch online, you are competing with the big guys, man. You got Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. I would not try to go after that. And what David alluded to, think about the popular hit movies that are trending. They actually have good search volume. Think about ways that you can, or the TV shows, think about how you can leverage those keywords, Eric, rather than going aggressively after some of the big competitors like Hulu, Apple. I mean, you got so many streaming services right now. I would not go after watch online. I just think it's a wasted opportunity. And then let's take a quick look at the Mexican, Spanish, Mexico localization. Uh, it's, it's not localized, unfortunately. Not, okay, yeah. so unfortunately I can't see it. Uh, okay, I can't see it now. 
So yeah, you, you need to have different keywords, different app title here, different subtitle, different keywords, all in English. It's going to help your US ranking. And I would try to just allows you to double up, right? And what we always do is always have a different title from your US title, always have a different subtitle than your US subtitle and definitely different keywords. So you have an opportunity, missed opportunity right here, Eric, that you can really focus on. Cool. So I want to also say a few words about title. I see that the word movie and movies are uh, two times at your title. So um, the algorithms of apps, Apple App Store um if you use only one word one time they will make it a plural form and index by plural form so i think you don't need to use uh, uh two times the word movie and movies you just uh you can just uh use the once uh word movie yeah. and also you can think about uh, replacing the app names from your uh title and put it from your keyboard section uh because you had it on your icon, the brand name, and you will be also indexing if you put it in the, your keyboard field uh, by your brand name. So you will have some uh, more space for another keywords in your title. I see. When you said brand name, are you saying like this developer ID? No, I say the movie deals. Movie oh, deals. Okay. Yeah. Right. I like it. Yeah, I think so far so good. Let, let's take a quick look at the app and then maybe we can give them some feedback on the app itself. Uh, no, well, let's do this. All right. Whoops. Wrong phone. All right. Jen's here from Love Sync. Jen, we got your, I got your app already on here. So here it is. Let's take a quick look. All right. Movie deals daily. See, like this is sometimes I see the opposite, David. Sometimes I'm like the screenshots are beautiful, but the onboarding sucks. Here is the best words that you can use movie deals daily. And then Joe yeah. said in the comments, and I agree with you, Joe, I'm not sure if I'm saving on streaming or purchasing a physical copy. So think about that, Eric. All right. This sounds good. Movie deals. All right. Uh, create your wish list. All right. Awesome. One thing. Let's get started. The notifications. I'll allow it for now. Oh, there's a subscription. Interesting. Yeah. So no trial. Lifetime. I like that. Three-day trial for all these little things. Obviously, I think what he's trying to do is get us to buy a lifetime deal. Here. I don't know if you guys can see this as well. Try to blow this up there. I think he's trying to buy, get us to buy a lifetime deal here by having these different pricing. So how do I maximize this view enter full screen? Let's do that. Okay. I'm going to exit off of this there and it looks like, let's see, let's see what happens. Okay. So it looks like it's an all affiliate model type of thing. Like he's just taking me uh, and ads. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about this ad stuff. Like unless Eric, unless you're making a lot of money off this ad stuff, I just think it's, it's a bad user experience, throw a banner ad up there. But if I'm coming here to try to find deals and you're showing me these interstitial ads, I just find it really, it just leaves a bad sour taste in my mouth. I think it's better to let the user, uh, firstly buy some movie yeah. and after then you can show a net maybe. I mean, I like the layout. It look, does always look like I'm getting a deal. So I like that, right? Like constantly getting a deal. And he's just sending me to, let's try to find something maybe outside of the Apple store. So it's, it looks like all affiliate. Again, another ad, Eric, don't like. I like that there, is, there are a lot of information about movies, uh, trailers, something. So ratings and everything, description. So that looks great. Yeah. And the thing I would do is maybe even think about how you can do a remove ads, you know, yeah. like see this banner, I don't mind. And I think I would put banners instead because I don't mind it, but these interstitials, but then have a remove ads in a purchase. And then if you can make that free, you can drive more downloads that way using my favorite app advice campaign. But so far I was trying to find something else like an Amazon. I really am disgusted by these ads. I think you're being a little bit too aggressive on the ads and the pricing page. I like it. I like aggression, but I think it's a little bit too aggressive. All right. That's my feedback for you. Yeah, I should, uh, you should work on, 
uh, these ads banners and it can decrease your retention rate, I think, because nobody yeah. likes uh, the uh, the ads when he first time uh, came to the app page and after uh, three seconds, five seconds, uh, he see the ads. It's uh, it's not a good idea, I think. Yeah, also no ads. Considerable amount of text on that store page, try cutting down, that's substantially uh, a bit overwhelming. All right. He said, try so one, yep. uh, one, one, one more thing I want to say about the ratings. Uh, well, mm -hmm. the rating is not, um, it's, it's good, but it's not so high as, as it could be. So yeah. I recommend you to try uh, Apple's SDK uh, if you didn't hear something about it. So for asking users to rate and uh, uh, review your app so you can uh, make a request after uh, your user uh, bought something, buy something, and after that you want to, uh, you can ask him to uh, to rate or leave a review about your app. So this uh, tactic will increase your average rating in App Store, I think, and you will uh, have much more reviews uh, than you you are getting now. Yeah, and I, I think with all the aggression with the remove ads, you know, I have a friend of mine who is solely based off of this affiliate model like this for more like travel guides. And obviously the order purchase order size is a lot bigger for him because I'm buying like hundreds of thousands, like thousands of dollars and hundreds of dollars of guides. But at the same time, like if you really want, I think your revenue will skyrocket with less ads. Cause if you get your thing is going to be built on retention. Right. Yeah. Eric. And so it's like, if, by have showing all those ads, like I didn't even buy anything. And I just got, ugh, I was just like bad feeling. I got to get out of this app type of thing. And I think you're just being a little bit too aggressive on the ads and the subscription side of things like show it up, be aggressive. But I think this is a time I hate to say it, David, what I say, probably too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Cool. So do you want to get into the next app or is there anything you want to cover from an ASO perspective? Too? No, I think that's all for these apps. So we can move uh, on the next Jen's here. So let's, let's make sure she can, uh, oops, let me grab that again. All right, here it is. Oh, I love Apple. Okay. Uh, where is this? Oh yeah. Duh. All right, here we go. Love sync. All right, Jen. And there's, there's a few apps. We did one earlier and I talked to Dan as well yesterday is Intimately Us. So Jen asks, screenshots and messaging in the app store, onboarding process and paywall model for new features being added in V2. Let's see if we're at V2 version 1.9, close, close. All right, so love sync, improve sex. Are you married, David? Just out of curiosity. No, I'm not married. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. Not yet. All right, well, I am. So let's see, improve sex life and intimacy. I'm gonna assume, Jen, since you're in the comments, that this is more for like a marriage person. For couple. Privately. Yeah, good. Privately tap the app when you're in the mood, okay. You tap and your partner taps equals sexy time, all right. Your partner will only know if you're interested if they tap too. All right, never miss a chance for romance, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to like kiss my wife on the neck just to like signal. That's my tap to her. <laughs> Communicate about sex and intimacy with your partner in the simplest way possible with the press of a button. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So it's kind of like, hey, if you're in the mood, I'm going to hit a button, David. And then so forth. <laughs> Calvin said this was from Shark Tank. Was it in Shark Tank, Jen? Let's see. All right. Very. Yep. Any couples in a sexual relationship? All right. Any thoughts on the screenshot? Any thoughts of screenshots? So I think the captions, um, uh, the first line is smaller than the second line and you can see the same thing on the second screenshot. So I guess it's uh, it's better to, to, to make it uh, one size, uh, every word, every captions make the one size because it will be better to, uh, to, to read, to see, to look at the screen at your screenshot. So um, I also think the background should be more brighter because the uh, interface of the app is, is very dark. So the screenshot looks not so bright and not so maybe uh, they won't be so catchy for users when they saw it, uh, when they see it in uh, search results 
uh, by uh, keywords maybe for example mm. well, so that's, that's, my... that's awesome is uh, is it clear that the app is using double blind matching yeah in a way jen it is i think you know for me and i don't know i, I didn't catch your shark tank episode but like what and i agree with david like i think the the screenshots could be way better done i think what you want to say is what's the main benefit right privately tap privately tap the app when you're in the mood is what i have to do but what is the main benefit right and maybe the main benefit is hey you know like never never miss a I don't know. You know what I mean? Like never miss an opportunity, right? Like, or something that where what I like to do also is David, like look through the screenshots too. I mean, I'm sorry, the reviews, Jen, and then look through what, like what you could possibly get. So look through all the five-star reviews and kind of think through what you might what people are saying that they really love about the app because right now i'm feeling like and i could be wrong that i'm just like okay what is the main benefit of this and would my wife like frankly as a husband like would my wife actually want to use an app where she has to tap a button all the time right like i don't know the guys would just be like i would tap it every day just be like hey there's a match let's go but my type of thing is like would my wife like things that I'm thinking about, like, would my wife really want to do this? And then also like, what is the main benefit? And right now it's very feature. And David, I kind of agree with you. I, I don't know that you might have stats to prove this, but I really don't like it when text goes like up and then down and then up and then down, you know, like I just, I read, we leave, we read up and down, we leave, read left and right, but we don't read like di diagonally. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's hard for users f f to read this way because it's better to place it on the top, I think, in on every screenshot. So the one more thing I want to mention, as you can see the uh, mock-ups of the um, iPhone is uh, just uh, looks like weird. Uh, you, I can show, uh, share my screen, yeah. uh, my screen and show you what am I talking about. Okay. Um, so do you see it? Oh, yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, this one. Yeah, what, that's what I'm talking about. So take a look at that. Cool. You want to show anything from an ASO perspective for Check ASO? Oh, yeah. OK, let's, I, let's move to our platform. So take a look at the statistics. And I, I also can show you our brand new feature, which is called Performance Index. So here we can see the search visibility is very low also. So that means that. Uh, the app is not indexed well, and you can also see that total index keywords are only 40, uh, 54. So um, let's move to performance section. Just a minute. So this section show you a performance index and uh, what is performance index? Let's take a look at uh, it shows how efficiently you attract you engage your organic users in different countries. So here we can see that um, in the United States, the average rating is uh, uh, six, uh, seven point four, and your app has uh, two point uh, four, and it's quite a low um, value volume. So, um, also one more thing I want to show from this section is that you can see all the keywords that your app indexed by and your competitors indexed by. So, uh, if we take a look at the keywords. Um, we can see that uh, most of all are not so relevant as they could be. Uh, and I'm talking about, so um, how the alarm, for example. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm showing the uh, wrong, I'm showing the wrong app, Steve, <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's office hours, yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, 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 just, just a moment. I will switch to another app. So this this one, yeah, love seeing better intimacy. Um, so um, the same uh, thing is uh, with performance index with uh, love sync in the United States, but we have um, another uh, countries. You can take a look at that in, um, for example, South Africa is three point one. It's better than in the United States. So let's take a look at uh, keywords. We see that. Uh, the app is indexed by um, Hindu for couples, the notch sex position. I think it's better to focus on keywords like uh, 
games for couples, for example, or sex, sexy games for couples, because they have a, a high search volume, high, high popularity. So you can try to rank uh, by them and get more, uh, get more uh, impressions and get more downloads. So I think it's a good way to attract, to engage more users. Hey, and, Dave, can you do me a favor and zoom in a little bit? Command mm -hmm. plus on your windows. Uh, zoom in? Yeah. Oh, Just hit Command PLS on your check ASO. So when, we, when you're talking about keyword volume, we can sort of see some of those things. There you go. Sweet. Yeah, that's great. So um, you can also see, for example, if you are wondering why your um, performance index is so, so low, you can see the tips here. This is our virtual assistant. Uh, she's name is Epi, so she can give you tips about your performance index and you can uh, see some uh, advices and insights on how you can improve your uh, visibility in different countries. And also here we have a map. And uh, let's move to the app page. And one thing I, I want to say also, it's uh, the same thing as the previous app we have, uh, we, we can see here that uh, that uh, the word intimacy is duplicating in subtitle and the title. And if you want to prevent these uh, mistakes, you can also go to one of our tools that is called ASO Editor. Here you can uh, do everything without your metadata text. And for example, if you duplicate uh, the word um, Let's uh, duplicate the word movie. And here we can see that um, we have a warning here, just a few seconds. Oh, something went wrong, I'm sorry. Let's try another way, yeah. For example, here you, you exceed the maximum allowed number of characters. So if you uh, do something wrong, we can uh, say you that uh, it's only 30 characters allowed in uh, App Store subtitles. So, and another interesting features and uh, ways to work with your um, ASO metadata. So go check this section. Uh, this tool is very uh, valuable, I think, for everybody who, who is doing ASO. So mm -hmm. that's it, I think, for this app. And we can move to yeah. the office hours. Sure. Well, I'm going to go in a little bit. Jao says, I've been using Check ASO for some weeks. I have to say, I love their design. So there you go. And I want to, Jen said, is it clear that the app is using double blind matching? It is pretty clear. I'm going to get into the app itself. What from my, what I'm gleaning from the screenshots itself, Jen, I think that it's more for couples. I don't know what the double blind match means, but I'm assuming that I'm in a one to one relationship, not a one to many relationship where I'm just double tapping a bunch of people. But I think it's like, if I'm already intimate, like, are we far apart? Like, I guess those are things that I have, but I, it is clear to me that I tap, she taps, we got some, we got a match. And this is, <laughs> I did it instinctively. Joe, Joe says, every time I hear sexy time, I think of Borat saying sexy time. <laughs> so here it is, Joe, just for you, brother. I did, it. I did it just out of, just because I was been reading the comments below for you. All right. And then Ann says, Hey, David, do you have, does Check ASO have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, we have, you can just uh, search in YouTube. You can find easily, just uh, uh, paste the Check ASO in your search uh, and you can find it easily, I think, yeah. We have a lot of webinars on our channel, so go check in Russian and in English. All right, yeah. so we'll link that into the YouTube description as well. We'll get it from David. Yeah. All right, let's get into app because Jen did say, hey, can you guys go through the onboarding process and the paywall model for new features being added. All right, strengthen intimacy and connection. I love this. This is great, Jen. The this feels like, hey, this is the big benefit, right? Like and this is why I said earlier, this is where I usually see the mismatch in that previous app. I say sometimes the screenshots are beautiful, but the onboarding process sucks. Here, I think the onboarding process is beautiful from what I see, and the screenshots need a little bit more help. So I love this. Mm, oh, I love that. Don't hold yeah. that. Okay. See this, the messaging that I like. And I like, I like the design here. Interesting. This is beautiful, Jen. Like I love, I love all this. Love all this. This is great. All right. 
you got me. Okay. <laughs> oh. Quick. Sexy time. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Like this. All right. I'm gonna. All right, guys. Don't add me on Love Sync. All right. I am. I am taken. I apologize to every lady who wants who's looking at my username. We're gonna put Steve P. Young, and then. But I'm gonna sign up right now. I'm gonna take my this off. So, David, fill in some time. So I think um, I want to say that about something about signing up. I think for everyone, it's better to uh, let users uh, to sign up, uh, sign sign up via Apple ID, uh, social network uh, accounts, for example, Facebook, Instagram. So I don't want any, any time when I download the app. I just paste my uh, um, my email and got uh, in my inbox some information about the app. So I think it's uh, more likely for uh, users and uh, to have uh, the function of signing up via Apple ID, for example, first of all. Yeah, I agree. And so what I had to do was sign in with my email. I got a email that I'll share with you guys where I had to confirm, I confirmed, and now I'm able to log back in. The The thing that I saw, Jen, it kind of went away, but after I logged in, you hit me with the not push notification. I think the great push notification would be, even during the onboarding process, be like, hey, and I this is what I probably would recommend, You know, never miss your partner when your partner is ready. And then you say, enable push notification. Then you have my push notification enabled before I even hit the sign up process. Because then if I don't sign up or if I do sign up, you can then use that to then re-engage me, get me to sign up or to then get me back into the app if I did sign up, right? So just an opportunity there, I would probably ask for push notifications early on during the onboarding process. Use it as a way to get people back into your app as well. Okay, I'm going to put in my own email address as my partner. Cool. Email you when they accept. Great. Back to Love Sync. Great. All right. So here, let's see if I can figure out how you're getting to a paywall. All right. I'm in the mood, Steve. Let's go. All right. Uh, just wait on your partner to accept. So I don't, I don't see where the paywall is, Jen. You might want to, is there any way, do I have to confirm first before I see the paywall? So interesting about just that i don't know do i have to confirm first so maybe you can leave in the comments below all right anything on your end david so maybe it's just free now maybe they are going to add subscriptions in the future maybe yeah so, i don't know where that paywall is she did mention in her email would you fill out form just so paywall. I, think, I, I think then one of the models of uh, monet monetization could be the uh, that you can allow uh, some maybe 10 taps for free and after that you can uh, take um, take money from your users and give give them free taps maybe 10 or 50 or 20 taps for free but i re really like this app i think that's a great idea All for right. every couple just said there isn't a paywall yet and i think jen what i would try to think about through and I, you guys know more and i'd love to talk to you in person and see how you got on shark tank but I think I'm more interested in like, also like how would this app operate if I couldn't get my partner to accept for one, or how else can I do this while I wait for my partner? What else can I be doing? So whether it's positions or, you know, ways to get your partner into the mood, tips on how to get her to press the button as well. Like things about that might help with your stickiness and also your paywall so that it's like, hey, you get these features, like David said, 10 taps for free. But if you want this extra content about all this or X, Y, and Z features, it's behind a paywall. And now I'm willing to pay a subscription because now it's like, you know, you have romantic date ideas. Let's not get all raunchy, David, okay? It's the, everything doesn't have to be raunchy, right, Steve? All right, so like romantic date ideas or other things that are more intimate. And so maybe there's that layer that you can put in there as well. All right, thinking of new features, cool. And then Jen did ask earlier when you were talking about it, David, isn't it harder to rank for a higher volume, more competitive keywords? Do you have any recommendations for ranking for more competitive keywords? 
So first of all, try to, I think, first of all, you should try to make as many iterations as you could, as you can. So try to, uh, to test everything, try to use different keywords and then check your results and then adjust your strategy. So it just depends on you as much, uh, how much you work on your ASO. So uh, also use UA channels, use uh, Apple search ads, uh, try to work with uh, social media networks or um, everything that you can uh, you can do for your promotion for your app. You should do so um, for ranking. First of all, start with text out, text metadata, of course, and try to uh, experiment, make make experiments, and try to uh, make as many iterations as it possible for you. Yeah. Uh, and, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's it. Yeah, Jen, what you want to do is for some of the, the keywords, you want to have it in your app title, right? You want to have it in your subtitle. That's really going to drive help. I have a video, if you want to check it out, like how to rank for keywords that I put in there. It is sort of a gray hat strategy that if you want to deploy, you can deploy. We've seen good results with that, but definitely have it in your title, have it in your subtitle. I think better intimacy, if intimacy is the keyword you're going after, then great. But if it's not, if it's like couple games or you know, sex life or whatever it is that you want in there, you want to put it into your title. And I, I like this, but you don't need intimacy twice, kind of like what David said earlier, I think. And then obviously the Spanish Mexico is thing that you should have different title again, different subtitle and really utilize the Spanish Mexico localization and put English keywords because it's going to help you with your US ranking. If you're not a targeting Mexican audience, yeah, you can yeah. use English words. <clears throat> I just assume most people aren't, but if you are not targeting the Spanish Mexico market and you want to go after the US market, that's what you do. And I would think about other markets too, Jen, like maybe, you know, other markets like Brazil, I read a book about modern romance. Okay. And so yeah. like maybe Brazil, like other countries that where it is like more, I don't know, <laughs> sexual in a way, I don't think about other markets and localizing for that. It, Italian, maybe Italy is very sexual. <laughs> there you go. But France. I just want to finish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for this way, we have a great feature on our platform also. So if you let me, I can show you a few seconds. Sure. So uh, in our performance section, you can uh, click the bottom list and see uh, keywords that you are indexed in every country. So if you are working with your localization, you can find out different keywords and see the meanings. For example, if you are working uh, in um, oh, oh, Brazil, Brazil, yeah, here is Brazil. You don't know the meaning of the words that you see. You just click the bottom translate keyword and you will see the translation in uh, English or Russian. It depends on your interface language. Yeah, I love that feature. Yeah, that's a really, really valuable, really helpful for making localization, collecting semantic core and etc. So that's it. All right. We got some questions. We got to go rapid fire now. All right. Follow Flux, nah, Flux, Flux. Flux. <laughs> hey, I'm almost ready to launch my app to both Google Play and App Store. Best ways to get first attraction on it. First attraction app masters. Flux, you know, like obviously ASO, obviously if you have a UA, it's really dependent on the app itself. And so if you, if you want to put your app in there, let me know what kind of app and then I can give you better insights on what's the best way. But the generic answer would be ASO, Facebook ads. Those are the best. Yeah. And I think the main thing that you should uh, check before releasing that your app uh, works correctly without bugs, without crashes, because uh, even if we are talking about Google Play, their algorithms uh, pay lots of attention on these metrics, on external metrics of the app. So try to fix everything before you release your app. Love it. Joe, great point with push notifications, Steve. Thank you, Joe. If you agree, I, I love it that you agree as well. And then... Jen, Aiden says, yeah, he, it is a store Maven Chrome extension. Aiden, always good to see you, my friend. So I'm glad you're here. All right, let's get rapid fire into these other ones. Our office hours, let me see what the question is real quick. App audit and screenshots feedback from Jagar. All right, Jagar says, whoops, I never share the right stream. Okay, so if you want screenshots, then I would say let's not focus on the 
the keywords yet. It's too much tax. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's too much. Small, small you tax. Probably show it in your in your view, David. You want to pull that app app up in your view, and we can get um, into it. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. Office hours. Yeah. See, like, if you see it in the phone, I love that Chrome extension. I got to get it. If you see it in the phone, it is so tiny. We can't read that text, right? So that's Jagar, like that's what I would do. It's like what I would say is think about when when I'm thinking about the words for this fitness at work. I don't think people care about that. It's like don't be sore after work, right? Like my dad just had back surgery, and part of it's like he's been working from home for like 20 plus years, and he's always sitting down. And so it's like the exercises to help you feel so, less sore. You know, make sure you have movement, stretch, all that stuff. So what are the primary benefits? Not just like I don't think fitness at work is the thing that people are looking for. What's the big benefit from your app? So, and I want to say some words about the icon. So yeah. I think it uh, doesn't represent the idea of the app. It just looks like uh, an app, maybe uh, utility, some utility app. It's not, um, seems like it's about sports exercises, about fitness or something like that. So I see the word office hours is uh, looks uh, kind of strange, weird because, and if we are talking about uh, mobile phones, if you see the icon, I I don't think that everybody can read the word I hours and understand what is this app about. So it's better to use something related to fitness in your uh, on your icon, I think. Yeah, we had another app in a different live stream, very similar about stretching. Their icon was great, but I agree with you, David, like this icon. And when you call it office hours, it doesn't like office hours to me is like work. It doesn't feel like yeah. fitness and stretching and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. And plus the way it's laid out, it doesn't feel like it's a workout app. Yeah. These people look so really uh, funny, uh, kind of weird. <laughs> And uh, this image is uh, looks like it's it's compressed. Uh, if you take a look at this girl, yes. um, she looks like. And I don't understand the the idea of these two uh, mockups. Um, I don't know what uh, you are trying to to show right. here. But and um, one more thing about captions: um, fitness at work video exercises. Try to mention something interesting for users. Uh, for example. Um, make activities at work or um or i don't know you have great i i've read the um description you've got uh, a lot of features a lot of great things and i think you can mention everything or some things from your uh description uh, on your screenshot as a selling point yeah i like it see like there's a lot of stuff recommendations based on imp by working hours, identify, you know, one of the screenshots he wanted to point out, that third one is identify your pain areas and we're gonna help you with that. So like relieve pain, you know what I mean? Like these are things that are benefits rather than everything here on the screenshots is all feature-based. Like here's what we do, we have video exercises. Great, I think we expect you to have video exercises, but that's not a primary benefit to the app as well. So, yeah. and then they even have like built-in body measurement tracker to record your weight and vitals with Apple Health. So the, one tip for you guys, if you have any Apple integrations, put it in your screenshots, man. It's gonna help you get featured if that's something that you wanna get, you want to happen. All right, let's, we got about 10 minutes left, so we're gonna go rapid fire in this app itself for Jagar. All right, again, push notifications, don't do it. Tell me, double opt-in. Hey, wanna get reminded to stretch? Yes then ask for it. And this is to my point with Jen, you know, he's asking for it sooner. I'm gonna hit non allow because you're not doing it right, Jagar. All right, let's do this. Sign in with Apple. So I love the sign in screen, Jen, it might be something that you might wanna consider down the road. I'm a male, uh, profession. What profession should I be? What profession do you do you think I look like? Come on, be honest, David. <laughs> I think you are, um, you look like a lawyer, maybe. Or a lawyer? Okay, I'll take it. Uh, working position, let's say sitting standing board. and walking. No, standing, so the, sitting. The onboarding is very, very hard as for me. Mm. And one more thing I want to say, I downloaded yesterday the app 
and mm -hmm. as uh, my uh, interface language is Russian. So I started, uh, I opened the app and the uh, localization is very, very low quality. So I was kind of, uh, it was ridiculous because sometimes I didn't even understood some words uh, or the meaning of some sections because it's very, very low quality. So uh, try to make it better because if somebody is going to use you, for example, in Russia or in countries where uh, people speak Russian, they will be um, will be not, uh, th this won't be a good idea for them because uh, it's kind of strange and weird, uh, the level of uh, localization. And I see that on the app page that you have also um, localized your interface for French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, and etc. So I recommend you just uh, try to check all these elements, all the localized elements, interfaces, because that's really, really not uh, the best way to attract and engage and re return the uh, your users. Yeah, I, I mean, just to nitpick a little bit, I don't like the text, like if I, this pain, I don't like this cursive. Joe brought it up in an earlier live stream, Joe, in the comments, and I agree with him. Like, it's, it makes it harder to read. Just bold it or make it blue, but keep it the same font. Changing the fonts like this is it's not very good. All right, I think I need this app. Not very readable text on screenshots, but idea is great. Yeah, we. I like the idea too. Okay, again, this is this is a feedback I gave one of my friends too, and he he took me up on it. This again, I don't like this text. I like that you're showing me the pricing page early on, but there's too many colors. And that's what I told my friend too. It's like, there's too many colors. My eyes don't know where to go. So just put everything else dull and go. let my eye go to the one that you want me to buy. So if you want me to buy the six month or the one month or the three month, make everything else like a very like white color. You don't need yellow, green, and blue. It's too confusing. I don't know where to press. Frankly, I don't want to press in any of them. And so right now, I will just click it, user custom, I like that. Okay, and then how do I exit? So it looks like I can't exit. It's like, if I can't pay, don't pay, get out. You don't wanna pay, get out. It looks like that type of app. Let's click yeah. on this. So three day trial, okay. Which I don't mind, you know, like we had somebody on last week, David, they were talking about like apps that are very specific, fitness apps, very specific to a category. They've seen good results with just saying either pay or get out. So maybe you don't need to free, do freemium. What I would just say about this pricing page is too many colors on my end. Yeah. All right, cool. We got some questions too. We've got from ASO MF Queen. It says, I've got ASO 101 questions. Bring them, bring them. How long do app stores index new metadata, David? Um, well, it depends on the stores. Well, um, if we are talking about Apple App Stores, it can took up to three days, I think. And if you after that uh, are not indexing, so you are not going to index in the future. So you you are going to adjust your strategy and update the metadata. And uh, if we are talking about Google Play uh, market, so it can take up to three, four weeks. Sometimes it can take up to two months. For example, I had such case in my so but as usual it uh, on google play it's about uh, three or four weeks yeah uh, ios is pretty soon all right yeah pretty soon you just update your metadata the next day you can see everything about your indexing your rankings and so on yep Floxic says hey steve i'd love for you to review my app in the future it's still under testing i'll need your email just fill out that form Floxic. my email is pretty easy just steve at appmasters so dot com dot co works for you as well and says i have a very important question how do you pick countries for localization i mean there's a lot of them david well uh, the same the, uh, the same thing i think um, it depends on your app on the countries you want to uh, attract users but you can first go to the taiwan countries for example or you can check the popularity of your uh, category of your app or or your competitors uh, you can do the research we, you can also for example on our platform it's it's very easy for you uh, to make research and 
uh, try to find some insights on the keywords and uh, text optimization, screenshot optimization of your competitors or related apps. So try to make the research firstly and then decide what country you are going to um, make a localization for which, which language or which country. As well. And is I look at my competitors. Who are the big competitors in this yeah. space? Where are they getting most of their traffic from? You can pull this with Check ASO. You can do this with any other tool out there, but you can look at this and with Check ASO, what the cool thing, what I love about it is that translation. So you can put in your competitor in there, see what keywords are ranking well for. You want to pull that up real quick, David? And so we can sh sh see that one more time in there. Yeah, of course. You pull any of the apps that we've been auditing. So like you go in the performance tab, you go into the countries that yeah. rank for it. And what's the cool part about Check ASO is like a lot of the keywords, they auto fill for you, right? You don't have to guess which keywords to use. Correct me if I'm wrong, David, but like they'll tell you the keywords and then you look at the different countries in that drop down, and then you can have it translated. And so for me, you know, I have a video about how to like localize for any country that a little hack that I use, but here the advantage is, I would have to like find out that keyword and then go to Google Translate and figure out what the keyword is. What I love about Check ASO is, is that you just see the translation in here. So that, or you can just uh, uh, if you are uh, searching for the current uh, common keywords. For example, I want to try sport or office. Let's try the word office. Yep. On the search, sorry, office, and you can. Uh, see your see the rankings or and see the uh, search volume and impressions uh, by different countries. So if you are go if you are making a research, you can just um, try your most uh, uh, the most relevant keywords and search for them in different countries and also see the translation, for example. So it's a great way. You can also filter by different regions if you want only Europe or maybe. Asia and so on. Yeah, love it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go fast forward here. Shaz 5,000 Shazam says, hi, Steve, thanks for the great stuff. If starting ASO, what would you recommend to track the my about my app? Oh, what would you recommend to track about my app daily? Oh, that's a good question. What do you what do you think, David? Well, I think the main, uh, the main things you should track, it's uh, app rankings, uh, the number of impressions, page views, uh, the number of app units, uh, your retention, turn rate. And uh, I think that's the main things, the main metrics you should uh, track every day. Yeah, agreed. So downloads and those keywords are yeah. the things yeah. I would be looking at too. And then Floxic says he's looking for somebody with marketing. You're in the right place. So that's what we do. If you want to work together, he's a potentially even you. Yes, let's, let's, let's talk. All right. Let's go to the last app, the yep. Chris, I believe. The Chris, ah, man, I closed it. All right, I think it's Chris. So I'm gonna pretend it's Chris. Chris says, how do I regain my ASO? All right, so let me pull this up real quick. So he's actually, you know, from an ASO perspective, I think he's ranking pretty well. Fantasy Football News, the screenshots, joins the tens of thousands, very short. But when I search for fantasy football news, he's number four. So I'm like, all right, you know, you're not doing so bad, Chris. So I think you're doing good here. But any recommendations for Chris, David, before I start rattling off stuff? Yeah, um, well, I I don't know uh, nothing about fantasy football because <laughs> in Russia, nobody, is, uh, everybody likes uh, soccer and watch soccer and try to uh so uh, that's why i can say uh, according to the screenshots i want to say that there is no captions so it's hard to understand uh, the information that you want to show on your screenshot so this uh this can decrease your conversion rate and uh, about um, long description i think it's uh, quite short mm -hmm. so uh, you can uh, try to use uh, more keywords to affect your uh, traffic from um explore channels so to appear in a uh, similar app section and uh, not only uh, 
get your uh, downloads from uh, keywords, but also from explore traffic. Yeah, I agree. And I think with Google, you know, what you, and I could pull it up too, what you really want to focus on is your app icon. Cause if you think about this, oh man, I got to reconnect. Okay. If you think about just the search results that are showing up for fantasy football news, which I think it's your primary keyword, the look at these and then look at yours. Now, granted, this is fantasy life. And I think this is from Matthew Barry. So that's why you, they can kind of get away with a, yep, it is Matthew Barry. See, I know my fantasy sports, <laughs> it, they can get away with that because obviously Matthew Barry is well known, but look at the other icons are very well done. And while I like this, and it could be just Google, right? Like Google, they like this plain stuff. So it could be that. What I would also recommend you do, Chris, if you want to do this, is what I've been really focused on from an ASO perspective on Google Play is really driving up the downloads and your ratings. And so you have pretty decent ratings on here because in the search results, what people normally see are the app icons and the app name. And then once they get to your pricing page, because they can't download from the search result, they, that's the first thing they see is the icon and then your like metrics. So really playing up your metrics in there is super important too. While I try to connect my, my phone so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right, let's get into this. Anything you want to add while this waits? Yeah, one more thing about icon. As for me, um, the icon looks like more a game icon, uh, not uh, the icon of uh, app, uh, news app. As for me, if I see uh, this icon in similar apps, so yeah. I, I decided that it could be the the game. Yes, and I think the similar apps is a great thing, what you just talked about earlier, David. So I think what I would do, Chris, is really look through the similar apps stuff. And I'm going to put fantasy football. Let's see if he ranks at all for fantasy football. Okay, so not really. I think it's super competitive, obviously, but here's what I'm talking about, right? Like the icons are super important on Google Play because that's all you see, right? So you have to track it. The app name is what they see as well. So what you might want to test too is, Chris, because Fantasy Football News, you have a lot more, but look at who you're up against. You've got, oh, Right here, so you're number five here on the, oh, we've got ads, so one, two, three, four, five. Like maybe, here's what I, I would think, this requires A-B testing, so you might want A-B test this, but fantasy football news, and you got room here. So it's like dominate your league, or the fastest, get all the breaking news, something like that, because we know from our A-B test that having social proof in your short description actually helps, but I think that's when short description would actually displayed in the search results. Right now, what I would try to do is have good social proof in your app name, and especially if you're just dominating with fantasy football news, maybe add that, like the win on that. And then think through the icons. I would A-B test the icons a lot, kind of like what David said. It feels like a game. And just think through like what people want versus you know, if you look at the, if I'm comparing icons, it's like, uh, I'm not sure I want to, you know, yours makes sense for me. So that is it, David. I think we're good. I'll take a quick look at this app as I'm launching this. Everything else looks pretty solid, but yeah, that looks good. All right. Let's get into any of the last questions before we say goodbye to everybody. All right, David. Uh, I've got good stuff. Do right. we have something interesting? Yeah, we got Lori says, Hey, I'm thinking about dressing up my app page to Black Friday and Christmas. Is it worth it? Well, I can say, um, yeah, but it depends on what are you going to do. Um, and if you, if you are going just to uh, change the icon, for example, uh, put the uh, new year tree or a Santa on your icon, I don't think it uh, it can affect your uh, conversion rate or something else. But if you are going to um, to make some uh, something interesting inside your app, maybe if you if if your app is about maybe um, for example, if you sell movies, you can uh, give a ninety percent uh, discount for movies about Christmas or if you are selling something, you can uh, give a, 
if you are a game, you can give a great discounts for your in-apps, for example, and show all this information on your screenshots. So you can attract uh, users and they uh, will understand then if they download your app, uh, they will have a good chance to buy something cheaper than usual. Yeah, I, I do think that it's worth it. I mean, I do think it will help with the conversions. And so, and if, especially if you're trying to reach out to Apple for a possible feature, they always love that stuff. And I, I was going to show something real quick, but like a lot of the bigger apps, they tend to, as seasons come along, they tend to change their icons. Sometimes their screenshots and a lot of times actually their screenshots with the seasons. So I think it's, it is definitely worth it. You yeah. would do good. All right, Emilio says, great live stream. Thanks, congrats, thank you. Any last thank questions you. for you guys, fill them in. David, any last parting words? Yeah, I want to say thank you, everybody who, who was here today with us. And thank you, Steve, for uh, inviting me. So it was great to, uh, to be here with you. So thank you. Yeah. No, I hope to see you again sometime. <laughs> Agreed. Again, guys, go check out checkaso.io, checkaso.io. You heard it, not just from me, but from John in the comments that he's been using it for a few weeks. The UI is phenomenal. The localization, a lot of that performance tab that David showed off too. So go check it out, checkaso.io as well. Next week, we're going to come back. Same channel, same time. I'll be here. I'm super excited to have you guys on. And I'll leave with this. I always try to have a joke in there, David. So in the lame meter, 10 being super lame, one meaning you thought it was funny, going backwards on this. I married my wife for her looks, just not the ones she's been giving me lately. Just for That's for you, Jen, for all the intimacy stuff as well. I'm going to let my wife know. I tapped the button. I'm ready, honey. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Oh, John says, is the fitness category different in any way compared to other category in terms of marketing? It is so considering how competitive it is. You got to, Johan says that. David, do you have any thoughts on this, like category versus the impact on ASO? Um, well, I think the fitness category is very competitive, so um, you should work and just try to find some insights to uh, make your ASO better, to make your rankings better. But in terms of marketing, I don't, I don't think that um, it matters uh, the what category you want to choose. If if your app is about fitness, so it's better for you to choose fitness category. So you don't want to choose the social media category or games if your app is about fitness. Yeah. So it's quite simple, I think. I like it. All right. And Jen gives it a one. All right. Well, people are coming. People didn't like it. All right. I'm glad you guys did. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining every week in, week out. We're going to talk all about marketing next time. I think marketing is sort of the, especially for indies and especially for ASO, it seems to be the big topic that gets more views and everything else. So thank you guys for joining. I will see you guys next week i know right all right cool I'll see you guys next week thank you david oh, thank you steve. so dot io david thank you so much for coming on and doing this thanks steve have thank a, you guys. have a good day everybody have a great weekend. we will see you guys next friday peace out bye bye